Okay guys, here's the thing. I really tried my best to catch you guys a muscle cracker today. Because I had a, quite a lot of questions on what traces to use, what to look for, and how to catch them. And um, yeah, it's simply not that easy just to go out and go and catch a muscle cracker and then film it and, and then you have a video. It simply does not work that way. Fishing does not work that way. If it worked like that, well, I would have loved it. But yeah, guys, it doesn't work like that. Um, fished the whole day, didn't get a cracker, but I still thought, well, let's make this video and let's upload it. Maybe there's something that you guys can learn from it. Especially the guys that are just starting out and is yeah, keen to learn some things and you're follow, following the channel to learn new things. And it's not always just about the fish. And obviously I cannot catch fish every single time I go out to, to fall. These videos without any fish actually helps me to get more information over to you guys because uh, when there's a lot of fish or there's fish in the water, there's not time in the video for, for all the informative stuff. So here's another Zulu fishing caught nothing video, if you can call that. But first we get into the video, let me take you to still fishing. Still fishing is situated in Stolbar and that is where I buy all my fishing tackle and gear from. I have an online shop www.stallfishing.com um, Use my promo code ZLF and a little bit of that goes towards Zulik fishing and it helps me to help to fund this channel. But I want to take you there, I want to show you how the shop looks, how they stocked and yeah, you guys can see they for real, they lack it and the service is excellent. So let's go. So this is Renai. Say hello. <laughs> and there's Mike. Always on the phone. Looking good, Mike. We got some toys. All the rods. Some oil skins. Some tackle bags are down there. Of plastics, clothing, and let me take you to the online store section. Stefan in his office working his ass off. Hello, Hello. Jeff. Hello, bro. Probably watching some stock markets or something. Guys, this is an online store section. When Zandre comes with me, he loves this section because it's baits and baits and baits and lures after lure, tackle after tackle. So, yeah, like you guys have seen, he loves artificials and fishing. So, this is like heaven for him. There we go. Loads of bubble wrap going on to the packaging. <laughs> That's the good stuff.
So guys, as you can see, they're well stocked with all their reels, all their rods, all their hooks, sinkers, swivels, lines, braids, everything you will need. Lures, not to mention lures, they're well stocked on lures. Everything that you will need in your daily fishing and on those epic fishing trips that you are planning for weeks and months. Everything is stocked at Still Fishing, so visit the online store www.stillfishing.com Enter the promo code ZLF and support my channel via doing it and uh, just guys back to the video Morning guys Just walking on those rocks on my own here and um, foraging some alecrecal limpets, armadillos and whatever I can find because this morning because this morning I want to fish for a mussel cracker um, we haven't I haven't heard any reports of mussel crackers lately but the southeast has been blowing and you've heard me complaining about the fish being bad last, last week in last week's video so I thought it good well we have the conditions to fish for the mussel crackers let's go and see if we can't find it water is a little bit warm but it looks absolutely beautiful for them um, just the right amount of foam um, breaking working water not too strong not too flat a little bit of color in the water it's not crystal clean so it looks really good as the day progresses I'll show you where I throw and what I'm looking for um, I can't send the drone up to show you guys exactly in depth where I want where I want to throw and where I want to fish because the wind is a bit too strong but I'll try my best to show you from my point of view where I'm throwing and what I'm looking for um, it's just the wrong time of the day because it's really <laughs> it's late uh, <laughs> Uh, because of the curfew it makes it quite difficult to, to fish for the crackers early morning and late afternoon but um, yeah, we'll give it our best shot I like to fish really early morning as the sun comes out um, for the crackers and as the sun goes down that's that's your prime time for the crackers but we're gonna make the most of it okay guys I was looking for some bait on the rocks um, couldn't find any armadillos but I found some really big um, alecrecal they work really well for, for muscle cracker so I'm gonna show you how to prepare that just now and before we get to that I want to run through the tackle and the gear and run through the reel that I'm using just to show you guys have an idea what I'm doing and why I'm using the traces that I am using so my rod of choice today is the Ryzen Zero Heavy 15 foot HXL like I said I absolutely love this rod um, while I'm talking about this rod guys um, in my previous videos or last year you saw that I, I wanted to give one away well Adam's time your time has expired you haven't claimed the rod so guys the, the Horizon Heavy XHL is still available so there's still one left so I'll think about a way how I can give that away to one lucky subscriber so guys get subscribed but anyway back to the tackle rod Horizon HXL 15 foot heavy um, I paired that with a twin power 10,000 a 10,000 twin power um, I have an extra, a couple of extra 14,000 spools so I put my 14,000 spool on today I spooled it with 50 pound JDB ultra tough because you're fishing with quite foul rocks heavy in between structure let's be honest the mass muscle cracking can be, can be really nasty in between the rocks and um, they're real dirty fighters so you need to bully that fish um, to get it out of the structure and safely land it and then I just want to pull this back a little bit and then I've tied my 50 pound main line with an FG onto 120 pound JDB braided leader let me just wind it on here so that you guys can see because I get this question quite a lot um, my leader is just longer than my than my rod so when I'm going to cast it's about one and a half to two two wraps around my spool so when I clip it into my my bionic finger like that I'm throwing from my leader and not from my main line okay so that runs all the way through my guides the rod down here so everything is safe okay that goes to a quick release clip I usually use the one that Jefferson LaRue makes but this one was the first one that I saw this morning I actually prefer the ones that Jefferson makes but um, it's 
to my other tackle box, but uh, this one is fine and rolled up today. Then I attach that to a swivel. That's a, I think this is a number three or number two Japan power swivel. Then it goes to a Mona snoot. This Mona hoot is just over a meter, 1.2, 1.3 meters long. The thickness of this Mona is one millimeter. So it's one millimeter of Mona. That is attached to another swivel. That's for the trace not to tangle and to wind up. Just for the trace to move. Then on the opposite end, I have another piece of one mil Mono. That is about half a meter long. I reckon about 50, 60 centimeters long. And then on the same side as my main line or my main snoot, I attach my sinker trace. That sinker trace is slightly longer because I'm using a dangle. The six ounce sinker. Now very important with the sinker trace. That sinker trace needs to be much lighter than your hook trace. Because if you're fishing foul rocks, you're fishing in between structure, and if that sinker gets stuck, you can break only your sinker off. And most importantly, when you have a fish on, that's, the fish will break the sinker trace off, and you'll, you, you are free to fight your fish directly. And you don't have the sinker dragging all along and getting stuck. If the sinker trace is too thick, it's going to get stuck, you're not going to be able to break it off, you're going to lose your fish. Then to my dangle. My dangle is exactly like my cob dangles that I make, little piece of Dacron. Just put a quite a big big piece of foam on. That's for two reasons. First reason is to give it a bit, bit of bulkiness. Second reason and mo probably the most important reason is for this bait to, to, to float slightly up. I don't want to float too high. I want this bait just to float just above the sea floor really and fairly close to the bottom. But if you don't have flotation on. It works well but what happens then your your hook can be directly on the ground and you can be in a little crevice. You can be in a little crevice here and the fish will smell it but it can't get to the can't get to the bait. So you want your bait just to float just above the sea floor where it's easy accessible for that cracker to eat it. And uh, a lot of talking guys but uh, I hope this information suits you guys well. Let me show you how I put my bait on for a muscle cracker. Okay, there's our dangle. We'll need a knife, latex cotton and a seriously big alecrieco. The alecrieco is not big enough you can use two or three alecriecos but remember to stick to the size limits as well as bag limits. We're just going to hit this open with a cho chocker mallet or a squid mallet just just remember if you beat it open with you can use a rock as well but if you use your the chocker hammer just remember to turn it sideways sideways otherwise you're gonna hurt those grooves and you're gonna flatten your your hammer so let's just open it okay Throw the shells away. You want that big piece of meat. Get all that intestines as well. Make sure you get those intestines. Cut this little shell off, the mother or pearl or whatever they call it. Chuck it away. Keep that aside. Just gonna open it, split it in half. Slightly beat it with the hammer. Not too much. Guys, the bait presentation is not really important. The most important part of, of the bait is for your hook to be proud. So we're just gonna hook it through once. Now the hook is an 8 BKK in line. Right. Just put it on your foam. And then we just tie it with cotton. Really simple and easy guys. Nothing special to it. No rocket science or anything. And then we just slap the other piece on the other side.
the intestines. Just slap that on as well. Rain is coming down now. Okay. Alright, guys, there's the boat. You can see that the hook is nice and proud. The cracker eats it. It's gonna hook it. Yo guys, there's our boat. Rain is coming down now. And uh, well, like I said, I'm all alone, so it's not gonna be film this for you guys I'll try and do my best for you guys but if you are there's our bait looks really lacquer let's get in the water and hopefully a cracker finds it Guys, you see this? This is all white working water. You see? It's going to be really difficult to show you guys on the camera from this angle. But there's a reef running here. And then there's a reef coming out here as well. So this is a gully running through there and it opens to the back. I want to be... I want my bait to be right there. On that side of that breaking wave there. For that... That will be the entrance for the cracker and where they will come into into this gully and onto these reefs to feed on whatever bait I want to feed on. So I'm going to try and place my bait right there. Woo. Oh guys that's in the strike zone. In the strike zone. Eat it baby. First throw on that spot didn't produce a fish, so I just want to try this spot right next to me. Um, doesn't look too bad at all. Um, I'll go back to that spot once the tide starts to push really like it. It's already started, but I wanted to fill up a little bit more. But just I want to show, quickly show you guys where I'm going to throw, what, I was, what I'm looking for, why I'm choosing the spot. Okay. This is the reef that I'm going to stand on, and I'm going to throw just over these reefs. There's a rock there, there's a rock there in the water, and this is a deeper drop-off. So, the crackers will swim all along this drop-off, around that working water in there. So they'll feed in this working water section right here. So I'm going to throw just over these ledges, it's going to be a short throw, right on the edge of the drop-off, just to fish that little bit of working water there. Yeah, let's hope he's there. The really be important before you throw is to time the sets to see exactly where you want to place the bait and not to throw into a wave because you're going to throw into a wave it's just going to push you away from where you're single handed so you're just going to wait for that slack in between the sets and then you can see everything and then you make your throw. It's a
while it's not there either. So back to this first spot. Hope you guys can hear me because um, my camera got splashed wet multiple times. And my tackle bag is going to wash off the rocks. I need to move all of this back and make another plan to try and catch a muscle cracker. Water looks really nice, but it's two things I think is the problem. Water is too warm and it's way too late in the morning or during the day. But maybe we're lucky. And we get one. Damn it, man. Has to be one. But anyway, I'll persist. 